Okay, good people. Um, Merry Christmas, belated. Christmas was yesterday, but uh, all the same. The festivities are still on. Happy to be here. Happy to bring today's uh, sermon to all of us. Um, here with uh, Rispa. Mapungia <laughs> Mukono. And um, uh, great. Um, let's uh, share a couple of thoughts which I thought. Um, would be useful. Um, so Christmas comes at a time when at the same time or season, we are coming to the close of the year. So let's share a couple of thoughts because next time we meet physically on a Sunday, you know, it will be in the year 2022. At the same time, even as we make some uh, reflections um, on um, Christmas and um, what uh, we keep on talking about the the meaning behind the season or the reason for the season and what it does to us so on thursday we kind of started it off a little bit and uh, one of the things which we said on sunday on thursday sorry was um, the irony that innately innately the meaning deep down within we all uh aware that um, we need to be with friends and family. And I was saying that um, um, that is not only true for the Christmas season, it is true for the Christian life, okay? Where the Christian or what Jesus came to bring about, Christianity for that matter, is about relationship and friendship and networks and, and the people, okay? And um, again, I want to repeat that somehow innately all of us know that. You know, we know, you know, I need to go see somebody and kind of celebrate together with them. Um, I once listened to a gentleman called Buckner Fanning. And uh, he spoke about uh, the, the lost sheep. Um, that's chapter 15 of uh, the book of... Um, um, Luke, and actually he called Luke chapter 15 the center of the gospel, you know, which, which I find it to be quite, um, you know, appropriate. And there are three stories there. So there is a, the prodigal son story, which you know, we all know about. Then there is the woman who lost her coin and had to sweep the whole house, you know, and then there's a story of the lost sheep. All those stories end the same way. All those parables end the same way. The woman found the coin and called the neighbors to celebrate. The, the father to the prodigal son, you know, found the son, the son returned, they were rejoined, you know, with the family and the father for that matter, and there was a celebration, a huge feast was thrown on um, or was given out on the behalf of this youngster who, as the father would put it, he was previously dead, now he's alive. Um, and the same happens with the gentleman who lost his sheep. That after he found the sheep, um, ordinarily, ordinarily you would expect him, you know, this uh, animal has caused you so much trouble. You've been up and about, probably slept in the, in the bush, <laughs> out there in the bush looking for it for a very long time, maybe in the cold, you would expect ordinarily that you would be so angry and you would uh, discipline the sheep. But the Bible says he took it up his shoulders. This is Luke chapter 15. And he went and rejoiced. The common denominator in these three parables is rejoicing. Okay? So as long as or whenever there was a restitution, there was a restoration, there was a celebration. And I think this is an aspect of our Christian faith that should never be missed. Um, when God calls us, and maybe I need to balance these things, so just give me a couple of minutes to organize my thoughts on this one a little bit more. But let me please this. When God calls us, yes, there is, the, there is the responsibility, there is the responsibility of working out our salvation, granted. Yeah, salvation is the responsibility. Serving God and, you know, 
being a worshiper, it's, it's, it's a responsibility. Loving people, it's a, it's a responsibility. By this shall all men know you're my disciples. Go out and serve me, preach, you know, talk to people about God and talk, talk to them about your testimony, about um, your faith and uh, invite them so they can become partakers of the same commonwealth. It's a responsibility. We agree. And I don't think anybody can um, belabor that or begrudge or rather we can um, take it lightly. It is a responsibility. But even within that aspect of that understanding of responsibility, let's also not lose the fact that Christianity, salvation, um, um, uh, being in the faith, it's God calling us to a celebration. Because every time you find Jesus giving these parables, even, in, even of heaven, Okay, parables which would be representative of heaven, let me put it that way. He would talk about feasts and celebration and weddings and, and, and parties and people wearing the right kind of garments for that, whatever. You know, it, there's a lot of that in the parables of Jesus. In other words, you can't escape the aspect of joy and celebration and merriment and rejoicing as long as you're dealing with the Christian faith. And so for now, I just want us to, you know, you know, let, let's let's take it, um, let's put, let's go easy on the responsibility bit because I think that one we have already, on, on, always talked about. But for a moment, let's just talk about um, the coming of Christ um, in respect to living a life of, of celebration and the merriment and joy. And there are things which we have had been said. Uh, some years ago, I can't remember which, uh, was it a newspaper article or one, some magazine I was reading. And I came across something very interesting that um, supposedly happens in some parts of the world. Um, and people have come up with this, uh, you know, this idea of bringing, you know, total healing, emotional healing, or psychological healing, whatever you want to call it, um, using laughter. And the people are calling them laughter clinics or laughter therapy. Okay, very interesting uh, read. And they were saying that they have been able to um, cure quite a bit of, um, or I mean, quite, you know, a bit. But they've been able to sort out a lot of what would otherwise have been lost causes in people's, you know, you know, lives. When I mean a lost cause, I'm talking about um, ailments sometimes which begin emotionally, but then begin to affect people, you know, um, in their physiology, in their physical self. And with tremendous success. And in fact, it is my own personal feeling that um, if this was given a little more, you know, punch, we probably are going to see more um, uh, healthier population. And that should not take us by surprise, really, because the scriptures are explicit. And my forget me the verse, it's in the book of Proverbs, either 17, 22, but she'll confirm it for me, where it says that, um, that um, um, a good, a merry heart, thank you, a merry heart huh, does good like medicine. So it is not like People are picking this therapy from somewhere out there. The, the, the Bible clearly does say that if we can be able to posture our hearts, our minds, our emotion, in that state of constant celebration and merriment and, um, and enjoyment, and, and, and this is a posture, it's something we can tweak. It's not something that happens out of, um, it, it's, it's, it's not a result of happenings. Okay, if I say that correctly, let me go back again. It is not a result of happening. It's not, it's not because, um, you know, I got a better job. This is 1722, okay? A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Huh? I mean, that is the, the opposite of a merry heart, dries the bones. Um, what am I saying? Um, so initially I was saying that if this can be done on a regular basis, if we, it can become habitual. Okay, if we can be able to master the ability to posture ourselves, because it's not something that is the result of happenings. Joy, rejoicing, a joyful heart, whatever you want to call this, um, is a decision. It is a decision. It is a decision. Forget what, 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 what people say. I saw a meme the other day, you know, uh, 
and, and, and kind of reflected something which I've said. So years back, there was this great guy who spoke, um, you know, gave a quote, and he said that two people looked out of their prison window. One saw the stars, the other one saw the mud. Perspective. So this meme had a similar, um, you know, you know, kind of a scenario, but the the two people were now drawing what they saw. Okay, and one drew the prison bars, the prison bars. The other one drew the stars, but both are looking same thing. Okay, they are looking through the same window. One saw the prison bars. So that I think it's one of those, you know, you know, beautiful, thoughtful, very refreshing kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, message field memes. So what's 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 it that I'm trying to put here? That this is not something that both of these people are going through the same environmental, you know, conditions. Okay, but one is to use the term loosely temporarily free he is out there with the birds of the air he's out there enjoying the beautiful sights of the galaxy the, the stars and the moon and everything else you know he's he's his mind is free it's like a bird it's out there the other guy you can tell all he's thinking about is the bars the lock you know no you know you know and all that so the conditions notwithstanding, the perspectives are very different. So again, I want to put it this way, because again, look, we're going we're going into a new year, like we all know, we're going to be talking again, probably, not probably, you know, uh, on a Sunday in the new year. I think perspective will be a big, big, and should be a big concern. Should be a big concern for us. I talk to people, and I'm not saying I'm any better, but, you know, by the grace of God, I've been able to make us some small steps, you know, in, in this direction, some small good steps. Initially, it's difficult to not see the challenges you're going through. But I, I talk to people, let me come back to my point. And you can tell the negativity, the, the feeling of the world is, I'm carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. I'm not quick to judge because I've, I always feel I've been there. Sometimes you get overwhelmed by the challenges that you go through. But it will be good for us to learn, you know, step by step. Um, begin to appreciate that um, sometimes, oftentimes, our conditions will not change. Okay? I know we are told when you got saved, we change everything. But in, in reality, some things don't change. Um, I mean, people die, for example. We have friends who are mourning presently. I mean, th th that's permanent. Death is very permanent. It is us who change. It is us who look at things differently. It is not everything that we face we change, but we just have to learn to outlive some of those things which we can change. We have to learn to outgrow some of those things which we cannot change. And so for me, I'm thinking, and this is critical and it's important for the believer, Jesus came to not only quote unquote, change everything about us and around us, which is contrary, which is against our kingdom heritage. I don't think Jesus came to change everything about us in that manner. Some things will change, granted, but he also came to change the way we look at things, and especially those things which we cannot change, because not everything we can change. Do you remember Jesus telling, you know, the Lord telling Paul, that uh, the thorn in the flesh, which was a satanic messenger tormenting him, that um, he won't take it out, I'm paraphrasing. And that, and that was God. That was God clearly saying, look, I know there's something tormenting you, but I'm not going to change it. It's you who has to change you. So Paul later on says, look, I will now rejoice in my weakness. You, you understand? It reminds me of that one in James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. Count it all joy. It is a decision. Count it all joy when you fall in diverse temptation. 2022, and maybe I should have finished that verse so that I can give it in its full, um, you know, uh, in, in, in its fullest. Count it all joy when you fall in diverse trials or temptation, knowing this, the trying of your faith works patience. When your faith you know, the trying of your faith works patience. And then when your patience is completed, it's work, the Bible says, you become the entire perfect, wanting nothing. James 1, 2, 2, 4. Okay? So where am I going with this? 2022, which is five or so days from now, 
it's going to be a tough year. No, 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 listen. Um, as a spiritual person, I should be telling you things are going to, you know, be all sunshiny and rosy. But I hesitate, and that's why I'm posing. No, no, it's not all gloom and doom. Far from it. Let me give it a better name or a better phrase. It's a bag of mixed fortunes. So if you're if you're looking for some new year term to help you look at the year properly, 2022, just like 2021, just like 2020, just like 1990, it's going to be a bag of mixed fortunes. I can tell you this without batting an eye. There are some things you will hit and there's something you're going to miss. I can tell that there are some things which will be very, you know, rosy and sunshiny and beautiful and encouraging and bringing a lot of hope. And there will be, we'll celebrate new births, we'll celebrate uh, weddings, we'll celebrate new jobs, we'll celebrate fantastic businesses. But we will also mourn and we will also um, deal with the, with the losses and deal with pains and whatever, because that's what life really is. He brings his son, S-U-N, Jua, both to the wicked and to the righteous. He brings his rain. Puts, so in other words, it's, it cuts across. The key word here, the key here, the key word, is perspective. How do you choose to deal with loss? And I'm using that word deliberately. Choose. Because trust you me, somebody else will go through the same. The Bible says in chapter 10, verse 13 of Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians, it says, um, it says, um, no trial has come upon you and me, but such as is common. So it will, it's cutting across. It's cutting across. I think 2022, and especially now that uh, we are no longer, what can we say? We, we, are, we are aging. We are, we, are, we are aging. With the passage of time, we are aging. <coughs> we need to be more concerned about putting this very strong um, a bulwarks. Huh? They're called bulwarks. You know, surround ourselves and cover ourselves and insulate ourselves, especially in the area of our emotional well-being. Because I strongly feel that a lot is allowed to fester there and unwittingly or unknowingly, it ends up affecting other things about our lives. It affects our physical body. It affects our spiritual life. Let's pay more mind. Let's pay more attention to our emotional well-being. And one of the ways we can do that, one of the ways, and there are many ways, one of the ways we can do that, is to purpose, to see life from, the Englishman would put it, half full, more than rather than half empty. Half full is encouraging. Half full is hopeful. Half full is, yeah, it sounds okay, sounds better. Sounds better. It says, I'm not there, but I'm not where I started. I'm not there yet, but I'm glad I'm not where I started. Half empty, it's very negative. It sounds like um, I'm going down or it's not happening. It's not nice. I mean, when you think about it, it's not nice when you look at something that way. This this is a choice. And I'm, I'm encouraging us, and those of us who will be listening to this, I'm encouraging us because I know, and I say this from my heart, I know a lot is at stake. That emotional well-being is a fulcrum. Could a fulcrum? You know that little centerpiece where I see so moves from the other falcon it's it's going to be a very important linchpin no? holding so many things together we are raising children it is challenging i mean i can tell you it's challenging it is stressful we are going to work it's what you know work is not everybody wish you well be grateful if you find yourself in a work environment where it's all you know it's, 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 all, it's, 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 all, it's, it's all good. Sometimes we have to work with people who are not exactly very friendly and people who really want to play 
you know, games and get you out of the way. I mean, uh, uh, it is what it is. We are going into an election here, needless to say, and it's going to be very gloomy at some point. And let's just put it this way. Now that we know that the two major horses in this election, I mean, or rather, there are two major horses in this election, it simply means that you have a 50 chance percent of being led by a president you didn't choose. I mean, that is what it is. I mean, it, it, it looks more, as we move closer to the election year, that there are two people who seems to be, you know, um, you know, um, the main um, uh, players. Uh, and so let, let's start planning. No, 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 that, that's not a good word. Let's start um, accommodating within our own minds that it is more likely that the person who you want to be president may not be president. And begin to permit yourself, you know, to feel and to, 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 to accept that that can be so, that... You know, and even those who will celebrate for the reason that elections are very, you know, competitive and um, it has losers and winners, you know, um, and divisive elections are divisive. For, for those who celebrate, there will be half a number of people out there who will also not be celebrating. And they are also Christian, most of them, you know, you know, more likely. They also go to church, probably go to the same church where you go to. So my point here again, and I want to really put it very clearly, is let's think more about how we can insulate ourselves from emotional trauma and emotional injury and emotional damage and begin to work towards um, helping our minds to take the correct post, just tweak something. I mean, yeah. prepare for the best 2022, guys. But, oh, let me, let, let me, let me, let, let me rephrase it. Let me rephrase it. Expect the best 2022, but be prepared for the worst. It's living in wisdom. It may not sound like it's a faith-filled statement, but that's just a reality. Jesus told us that. I'm not saying anything new, really, am I? Is it not Jesus who told us that if you go to battle and you realize that you can't win, you can, you can make peace? Because it's not everything which you're going to change. Is it not Jesus who told us that if you want to build a house, you know, you need to count the cost and only start, you know, lest you get embarrassed halfway. Only get started when you're certain you've gone all the... In other words, um, not everything we hit, we're going to get something. No, not everything we aim, we're going to hit. You know, some things we're going to miss, okay? But that doesn't mean all is lost. And that doesn't mean that it is not going to work next time. If you follow what I'm saying. You know, it just simply means that for that time... Um, you know, it's it's not happening the way we expected. And so I'm just prepping us, preparing us. I'm just um, giving us a heads up and simply saying, look, I know 31st, there'll be testimonies, uh, not testimonies, prophecies. If you're a fan of prophecies, let me tell you something. We are approaching the prophetic season, trust you me, of 2022. You will hear everything from who will be president to how much rain it will rain in the year. I mean, you will hear all sorts of things. Some will be rosy, some will be... Whatever it is you choose to take, I want you to insulate your emotions because this is something that we can all learn. Insulate ourselves. Um, look, David did extremely well. In fact, I think outside of Jesus, David is my favorite, next favorite Bible character, I'll be honest with you. And I think he did very well with himself. I mean, he's got a name that is eternal up to today. I mean, David still lives in the mind, in the hearts, in the books. In the, David still lives in the flag of Israel. You know, they still have that uh, star of David. I mean, David is the father of that nation. Um, but David, with all his successes, you know, also has some little dark sides, which we talk about. But we talk about knowing that um, it is human to make mistakes. And so all I'm trying to say is that um, either you're talking about David, who, I mean, for me, is an excellent you know, uh, 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 person in terms of faith and following after the things of God, or Elijah, for that matter, or even throw in Moses. Okay? All these guys had their hits and their misses. Mine would be to encourage us to have an excellent, excellent mentality. 
you know, ment- I, I, I like that word. Just, just some excellent mentality. Mindset. Choose to see things in a little bit more positive way. And especially when you cannot change it. Choose to let go and let God. What I cannot change, I cannot change. It's just what it is. It is relegated or delegated to the Almighty God. He alone can do those things. It's what it's what it should be. But I need to say this, even as I come to my second point, and then I'll give my thought, and then I'm done. That it will also be useful to take 2022, um, because I began to talk about rejoicing and all that, um, by thanking God about 2021. Sometimes, um, and we've said this before, if you remember, this has come out from my mouth many, many times before. If you can think, you can thank. I think um, irrespective of all the challenges we've had, COVID and all the resultant um, experiences that COVID has brought um, in the course of the year, which is uh, about to come to a close, um, all factors considered, there's still a couple of things we can lift before God and totally you know, rejoice, not just rejoice, but be grateful and thankful, okay? A gratitude spirit is a great spirit. I don't, I, I don't want you to look at the obvious. Um, I need to say this better. Um, so the, the, the first place we go to, myself included, it's on the money front. So, no, I made less money. Business went down week, uh, you know, and stuff like that. But it is also good to look at some things which we take for granted. For example, the health of your family. I think that's a good thing. I think that's a good place also to... That we are finishing this year with all the difficulties with our wits around ourselves. Um, Let me then throw one better. Even your friends, even your friends. There's a verse of scripture, there's a version I was using one time in the book of Ecclesiastes that talks about um, pity the man who has no friends, but pity the man who has no friends. So I think um, it is a verse that talks about two are better than one, you know, they have a better reward for their labor. So one version, I think uh, one of those paraphrased, you know, like an amplified paraphrased version in a good news or message, one of those versions says, but pity the man who has no friends. Okay. Um, Sometimes it's just good to look and say, look, that I can be my truly self amongst this group of people I meet every now and again, that I can say I'm one of the few fortunate people to have excellent people around me who value me, who we can rejoice and even mourn together if it comes to that. Sometimes it is your church. I don't know how many people give thanks to God for church. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't think that happens a lot. (laughs) Somebody asked me a question the other day. Or somebody was asking a question my friends the other day. And they were asking that um, when somebody moves house, eh? for example, you move from one estate to another, you, of course, have at the top of your mind certain considerations, okay? Security is one of them. Is there water? Is there electricity? Or is it is the electricity, you know, um, uh, 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 stable? That is power. Is it stable? You know, access, you know, the roads, are they okay? You know, will I be getting stuck, getting home, you know, uh, on my way home? Things like that. And that's, that, that's normal. Schools, I mean, we always consider schools. And, uh, you know, somebody was making a joke and saying that um, um, the others who consider if there is a, there's a portion meal, you know, <laughs> so that uh, you can grind your maize because Ugali is a very important part of our lives. But he asked this question. He said, we make all those, cons-, and it was just a normal conversations just amongst friends. And this person asked, how many people consider church when moving to a new place? I mean, I'm going there. Is there a place I can be able to fellowship? You know, and uh, it just caught me thinking that sometimes, or rather, I have not even heard anybody say, uh, while I was moving from this place to the other place, one of my considerations is that um, there is a nice church there where 
I can always benefit from some spiritual, you know, um, uh, uh, nourishment, you know. And it's something to really, you know, <laughs> you know think about. I mean, do, do we thank God that uh, we, I don't know, you know, well, me saying this may sound a little bit selfish, but but do we thank God that um, we have a community of believers where our spirits, uh, 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 you know, are nourished, you know, and, and the friendships that come with it and the community that is built along, you know, those, 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 you know, um, around those um, um, uh, places. Food for thought. Food for thought. So, again, I'm simply saying everything you do, and especially on December 31st when we're going to be making our prayer, and it's good to make a prayer as we break to the new year. I think it's a good tradition. Um, I know God doesn't move a calendar, but uh, it doesn't matter. It's a, still a very good thing to do on the 31st, join hands with your family and um, make a prayer. But even as we do that, um, um, consider very strongly to um, give thanks. Give thanks for some mundane things. They're not that mundane. David was saying, I slept and I awoke for the Lord sustained me. Psalms 3 verse 5. I slept and I awoke. It's mundane. It looks normal. Kawaida, it's no big deal. Okay. This year, my two, well, my last daughter, you know, Stacy, cleared her university you know, um, you know, um, mas mas almost, and, you know, it's long been coming, it's long coming, long coming, children go to school and they are that very tiny, and uh, now those many, many, many years later, to imagine that your child has graduated, I mean, it's, it's, it, 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 it is no small feat. Tell you what, um, I mean, I, there's a big sense of achievement, I can tell you for free, I mean, there is. And a sense of gratitude, I'll be very honest with you. A very big sense of gratitude. You know, you know, yeah, you know, that your children are able to assimilate, absorb, you know, academic stuff and, and, and progress and graduate with very good honors, you know, that they have, their minds are up to scratch. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Those of us who have the benefit of the company of a good spouse. I mean, let me tell you, it's something to be, it's not every home that is um, happy and celebratory and um, and warm and hospitable. Some places are war zones. I know that, I'm a pastor, I can tell you. I mean, I talk to people, there are places which are war zones. You know, people go in there, I mean, and they have to keep their dad up because everything is just competitive and 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 snidey and tantrums and drama and everything you can think of and there are people who live in very horrid environments which they're supposed to call home and so those of us with the benefit i think it would be a good thing to just be grateful to god and even you've been grateful to god first of all be grateful to those people for making you know on a very personal level tell them i'm happy that you know we've we've lived together in the manner which we live together okay Okay, I don't think our wife should be hearing that we love them in our prayers. <laughs> and our wife should not be hearing that we appreciate them, you know, and what they do when, we are, when, when you're telling God about it. You know, we can stand by telling them. Okay, so my point again here is Christmas and New Year, which come and intertwined, same season, same, you know, period of time. Good time to reflect and good time to make adjustments. And so for me, and this is important, even as we begin to finish, and this is my number three point, and that is to mind our relationships. Let me say something here which will shock you. I would rather we severed certain relationships, and I hope that we can get the strength to sever relationships, and especially relationships which are toxic. Because in my big age now, I've come to see things which matter. And I can tell you relationships matter a lot in our success and in our mental and spiritual well-being. I can tell you, you don't need 200 friends. If you don't have to, you don't have to. If you can, well and good. If you can only do with 10, close, confidence, so be it. And don't feel some type of way if you have to sever relationships. And I know it's difficult. 
we come so far from with people and, 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 and it can be difficult to tell somebody, I don't think moving forward, we are going the same way and we are flowing correctly. Um, because you will thank me later, let me say this. If you can do some serious introspection, if you can do a proper analysis and realize that certain relationships in your life is like swimming upstream. And you know, like I do, that you're not becoming any younger. There are certain battles you don't need to fight now, honestly. You, you, you don't need to wake up in the morning and feel, feel, what's, what's, what am I, what's what I'm looking for? That I'm going to meet somebody who I have to keep meeting because we grew up together or for whatever reason. And you know it's like swimming upstream. And you know it's adversarial. You know it's difficult relationship. You know it's always contrarian. You know it's always very competitive. You know it always leaves you feeling drained. What's the point, church? I'm not saying we hate people. I'm not saying we don't talk to people. I'm simply saying, why, why do you want to give the best of us to people who don't value us as much? Why do you want to give the sacred parts of us, like Jesus said, to persons who are going to trample over our hearts? Why do you want to deal with people who treat us like options and yet we treat them like priority? I pray God that we get courage. We get courage to say, as I'm aging, I want to be more conscious about my moving forward. And um, I would rather roll with 20 people, 10 people. I mean, Jesus had three people he carried with him, with him rather, very, very closely. I mean, what do you think is to happen to the other nine? We know from scripture they didn't feel very nice. At least there's one place in scripture where we know that the disciples, you know, were speaking behind the backs of James and John because they were always, you know, very, very close to Jesus. They even recruited their mother at one time on an issue which they wanted a favor that when Jesus comes back in his kingdom, you know, one of his, one, each of the sons would uh, sit on both end, you know, both, both sides. I mean, these are human beings. They felt something. But Jesus knew who to carry with him. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it is important that we um, move into 2021 with a clear, proper reference on who we can work with. Clear reference of who we can work with and what are we looking for in those personalities i mean look it's not about money it's not about net sorry it's not about um, leverage no it's about relationship it doesn't mean that the rest of the people are relegated to nothingness no it just simply means that um you are going to give your sacred self to people who can be able to handle you okay people who understand you who understand you and I think that is important. And you will thank me, I'm telling you. If you do what I'm telling you, you will thank me because you will realize happy is a good place to be. Happy. Happy is a good place to be. I mean, many of us now are in our 40s, upward of 40s and in their 50s in our church. Okay? Most people are in that age. And I can tell you, it doesn't get any better. Moving forward, you know, our character concretizes. And you want to... You know, concretize when it comes to the friendships that you have. We don't, we, we don't make as many friends when we get, grow older. We don't, we don't, we don't. And so we, we, we really want to, we really want to, or we need to rather um, be very mindful of the kind of relationships that we make. And so I'm not going to take uh, too long of your time today. Uh, please think about those three things. I think they are important things to think about. Try to make it a bit easy today so that we can take up the year that is ahead of us with grace and take it up with gratitude and with a sense of introspection and reflection and um, make the right choices thank you guys god bless you and uh, talk to you soon